Hello, hello, friends. How are we all? It is a beautiful day here in sunny Brisbane here in Australia. I hope you can hear me. I think it was a problem with my microphone, but hopefully it's okay. Today, I'm going to be going through some of my recent purchases with Polaroid. Of course, you can see I'm wearing my Polaroid shirt here. It actually cost uh, something ridiculous like 35 euros uh, from the Polaroid store. But hey, you know, if you want the Polaroid merch, you gotta you got to pay up for those licensing rights. Now, I'm going to show you my all of my order here. I've got it over here. It came in a big box. I ordered it uh, last Thursday. Only took like four or five days uh, to to actually arrive all the way from the Netherlands all the way to here in Brisbane. So it's pretty impressive, like four or five days to get from Europe uh, to Australia. So that was pretty cool. I'm going to show you now what it looks like. So here it is. This is the first little bit. Uh, this is the first. They come in three like boxes like this, which is pretty cool. So here is the uh, the first uh, sort of thing. I had ten of these Polaroid 600 color film. Uh, I think I've already used one, so there's only there's only nine left now. Matthew Joseph, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. I'm paranoid about my microphone not working. And the next little box here is. So this is the next one here, and in this one here. We've got 600 film again. I run out of 600 film, except for duochromes. I'd run out of 600 film. So here is my Polaroid 600 color frame, color film. Can't say it. Color frames, color film, color frames. And on the back is actually there's a there's a photo from my friend Anthony Hands. That's his kids there. He got his uh, kids on a Polaroid box. How cool is that? Very cool. So I ordered ten of these. I think I've only got nine here because I think I'm already using one. And um, what else have I got? So there we go. I've got the color film, 600 film. I've got the color frame, 600 film. And over here, uh, I didn't actually order much SX70 this time uh, because I've already got quite a bit of SX70. Uh, I don't actually know where some of the SX70 has gone. It must be in the fridge. I got my first ever black and white SX70. And I got a couple of other packs of SX70 film color. But I've got like 10 packs in the fridge, so I didn't really need much this time. Uh, the last 600 film I bought was this one, Whoa, the green duochrome. So I've already got a yellow duochrome and blue duochrome. I've now got the green. I'm not really that fussed on the green. I mean, I like green as a color, but I don't know. I'm not really that fussed. So I only got three packs. Sorry, green duochrome. And I also got these beautiful eye type black framed images. So they cut color film with a black frame. Very, very cool. Uh, so there you go. That is what I'm going to show you again. This is what. 500 US dollars worth of Polaroid film looks like. Well, probably probably two or three more packs than that because I've already used some. So now I'm going to show you my three favorite Polaroid cameras. So let's let's go old school. Let's, let's start with the original. I got my SX70 here. Is this therapy? I don't know. Is it therapy for me or for you? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's I think it's therapy for me to try and um, not feel bad about blowing 800 Australian dollars or 550 US dollars on Polaroid. Uh, so this is my first, uh, one of my first Polaroid cameras that I, I really love. It's the SX70, of course, and I had this restored by the instant camera guy, Jake Bright, who lives down there in Melbourne. Actually, you know where Jake lives? Jake lives, um, I don't think I'm giving away any private information because if you have to send something to Jake, you'll get his address. He lives in Mont Albert, which is where someone else I know in Melbourne lives. Um, so there you go. So it's beautiful SX70. I bought this off a dentist here in Brisbane. Uh, and he had this camera was 60 bucks, which is about 40 US dollars. Couldn't believe it. Got her, it, like I put an empty cartridge in, it whirred up, it, it sort of spat, you know, it, it sounded like it was working. I put some fresh film in and of course everything came out completely mottled blue, not like not plain blue, mottled blue. So the bottom line is if you ever see an SX70 and it's in good condition, do not assume that it works because it then cost me <laughs> a, a refurbishment fee uh, from, from Jake down there in Melbourne. Uh, but it's a beautiful camera. It works perfectly now, thanks to Jake. And um, I really do love SX70. I like of the design of it. A lot of people have these converted from SX70 film to 600 film, and, and that's a service Jake does. I've left mine at SX70 because I do really like the SX70 film, especially for taking night exposures. And, of course, I did a video uh, a few weeks ago on this channel about uh, night exposures on the SX70. So that's my one of my favorites. And I, like I said, I do have the original Polaroid. You can't see the logo there. Polaroid uh, leather case for it. I'm going to show you my next one of my next favorites. Uh, this is a rigid body 600 series camera. Of course, it doesn't it kind of like that folds in, but it doesn't fold flat like the SX70s. Um, but I've got quite a few up there in the shelves you'll see up there. 
I've got a Spice Girls one. I've got all sorts of other ones. Uh, but this is probably my favorite out of the, the rigid bodies because it's got the sonar, the sonar, sonar, <laughs> can't say it, sonar autofocus. So a lot of the, the Polaroid rigid bodies are just like fixed kind of focus, I think. Not all of them, but some of them, a lot of them are, the cheaper models. This has got sonar autofocus and it's got a nice, you know, uh, shutter button there with a red trigger. I really like that one. But my favorite of all, my favorite Polaroid of all is, sorry, just gonna put that on the floor is this one here now it doesn't look very exciting look at all that it looks a bit um like it's a bit ugh, to touch it's a bit gross uh it probably needs a bit of a refurb doesn't it but this is the magical this is the polaroid slr 680 and it's a special edition and of course uh, someone in england uh, one of my listeners to the podcast i did a, a podcast episode about this ages ago a couple of years ago and someone said to me the special edition the se actually really meant nothing i think there was just like some extra stuff in the box or something there was there was no like there's no difference mechanically between an slr 680 and a, a slr 680 se but this is my favorite like it's got the sonar auto focusing there and uh, you know you can get if you turn the flash off you can get some really beautiful you know very shallow it looks like very shallow depth of field images with this camera and this is why this is my favorite it's got the flash already on board it's fast speed film uh, autofocus. You can disable the autofocus if you want a manual focus. It's got a flash there. You turn on and off. It's got a uh, tripod socket. It's not got quite a nice viewfinder, which you probably can't see. This is my favorite Polaroid of all. These are going for a lot of money now. I think I got mine originally for about 250 US dollars. This is like uh, seven or eight years ago, I think it was now. And now they're probably, I think they've like doubled or tripled in value. So uh, I've actually got two of these, would you believe? Um, long story. But um, yeah, this is my favorite Polaroid camera. Now I'm going to be going to some questions from the audience. So I put this on Instagram uh, probably a few days ago and I asked people, hey, I'm doing a live stream. Let me know your questions. So here we go. This is from Darth Grain. Gosh, that sounds a bit scary, doesn't it? Darth Grain. Do you have an experience shooting without a meter? Any methods other than Sunny 16? Gosh, no. I'm very much, um, you know, when I started doing photography, I, I learned on uh, autofocus, Canon, SLRs, all the meters already built in. And certainly, you know, I do have a thing for shooting the point and shoots. I love Polaroid cameras. And it's all very much auto exposure. Uh, the only times I, I probably don't shoot, I, I can shoot with a camera without a meter is when I shoot with toy cameras. Uh, so for example, here's my latest toy camera, the Pingo, the Pingo Penguin camera. You know, there's no ISO meter, there's no ISO setting, uh, you know, film speed setting, there's no aperture, there's no shutter speed. You literally put in, you know, whatever speed film you think it is and you go out there and shoot it. So today, it's a bright sunny day here in Brisbane. You can probably get away with, you know, 100 speed film with this today, uh, maybe 200. And certainly in murkier conditions, you'd probably go for 400 or 800 uh, speed film. But that is the only time when I shoot without a meter is when I use a toy camera because you can't change anything anyway. So the next question, who would you like to see bring back a modern point and shoot and what specs? Um, sorry, Matthew Joseph just put download a meter app and use the force. Darth. <laughs> yes. Download a meter. I have got a meter app on my phone, by the way. So yes, use the force, use the force stuff and, uh, use that, that phone meter. So, um, so this is, um, the UN shields. Would, who would you like to see bring back a modern point and shoot and what specs? I think if you, if you're looking at who's going to, who would bring back a point and shoot right now, most of the big camera names you'd have to rule out, you know, like I think, Nikon don't have enough money. A Canon, I don't think Canon have got enough money to do it. I don't know. What do I know? But I think the only companies that would probably have enough money to bring back a point and shoot would probably be Sony. And Sony, of course, uh, you know, Sony had taken on the the Minolta and the, uh, what is it, Minolta and the Konica, Konica Minolta. So that I think they've got all the Konica Minolta patents. Uh, I don't know if that extends to the digital uh, just digital or is it their film cameras as well? Who knows? But Sony would own a lot of the Konica Minolta camera stuff. Um, so you, and Sony have got a lot of money from all their other divisions. So you'd think, you know, Sony would be a good contender to bring out a film point and shoot. I mean, would they? I mean, probably not, I don't think, but who knows? Uh, but they are one contender. The only other company really who's got enough money to do it would be Fuji, uh, Fujifilm. So, of course, Fujifilm presumably would have all of the plans and the blueprints and stuff and the specs from all their old cameras. I mean, do they have the, the supply chains and, you know, and the assembly lines for all this? No, they don't. Uh, I mean, how much difference is there making a digital camera with a film camera? 
Again, I've no idea, but they certainly have the money to do it. I mean, would they have the will to do it? Probably not either. But I guess, I don't know, in the future, I think if you are going to see a new film camera, uh, you know, a compact point and shoot, it'd probably be from a company with lots of money like Sony or Fujifilm. In terms of specs, I would love to see it with a fixed lens. I think the, the world has enough compact zoom cameras. And, you know, the, generally, I think the, the, the zoom point and shoots are inferior to the, uh, the, the fixed lens ones. So I would like to see it have a fast lens, you know, F2.8 or faster if possible, but F2.8 would be good. Fixed lens, you know, somewhere from 28 to, to 38 mil. Uh, that would be lovely. Hello, Clayton Sharp. How are you, my friend? Over there in the States. Of course, Clayton won the, the Purple Grain comp with a cracking image. Purple Grain, the zine somewhere is up there on my, on my bookshelf. Uh, so hello, Clayton. Nice to see you in the chat. Um, the next question. Hello, Matt. This is from NP Jensen Film. Hello, Matt. Have you ever tested any compacts from Premiere? My own compact was a Premiere 101. Well, NP Jensen, I actually had to Google what a Premiere compact was. No, I have not. I've never used a Premiere uh, compact film camera. So uh, if anyone has, let me know. Let me know what you think of them. But no, I've, I've never used one. Next question is from S. Jeff Greenstein, of course. Jeff is uh, one of the, the lovely hosts of I Dream of Cameras podcast that you can find on the Sunny 16 Presents feed. And Jeff says... In a Lucy Matt versus Jeff Gabe tetherball game, who would win? Now, I must admit, Jeff, I had to look up what tetherball was. Um, and I've, I'm vaguely familiar with it now that I've seen a picture of it on the internet. It's, a, it's like a stick with a with a bit of string and a ball, and you've got to whack the ball. Uh, we had the, we have them in Australia. We, ha we had more like the tennis ball ones that you'd hit in the back garden with a tennis, um, not a tennis paddle, what do you call it? A tennis racket, a tennis racket, like a tennis ball. Um, but we don't really have a tradition in Australia of playing tetherball. Um, so, uh, yeah, who would win? Lucy and Matt versus Jeff and Gabe. Now, immediately, see, I'm very I'm very competitive with ball sports. You know, if there's a game of backyard cricket or there's a game of tennis or lawn bowls or, you know, something like that, I'm very competitive. And, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a good sport. If someone else wins, good on them. But I, I like to give them a good game, you know. So my immediate thought was that I would win this, you know, because I'm, I'm very competitive with, with the backyard ball sports. But then I remembered who's on my team, and it's Lucy Lumen. Now, immediately when I thought of sports and Lucy Lumen, the, the word that came to mind was unco. Um, that's an Australian word that means uncoordinated. I can just imagine Lucy like in a flap and and like punching herself in the face or something. And so I, I messaged her before <laughs> earlier, and I said, "Hey, um, am I right in thinking that you're completely uncoordinated with sports?" And uh, she said, "Yeah. How did you know? Why did you think this? But th that's true. But why did you think this? I think she's told me before. So." Sadly, Jeff, I think in a game of tetherball, Lucy and Matt versus Jeff and Gabe, I think Jeff and Gabe would win. Now, I would put up the big fight. Don't, don't don't get me wrong, but I think you guys would win just on sheer numbers. Also, Jeff's height. Jeff's height. Like, would, would Jeff's height, he's six foot seven. Would that be an advantage in tetherball? Or would he have to bend down and try and hit the ball? I don't, I don't know. I've never played tetherball. But there you go. Um, uh, Vivek underscore Sky says, what is your profession? What is my profession? My profession is making content for you lovely people. No, if I if I did that, if I, if I made a living out of that, I'd probably be living in a tent somewhere in the bush. Um, <laughs> not that you're not all lovely people, I just don't make any money from this. Uh, so my profession, I, I work in communications and marketing. So I write stuff for websites and social media. And in the past, I've done podcasts and video and photography and yeah, all that kind of stuff. So I guess it's on the creative side of, of communications and marketing. Um, and from Spang Film, it says, well, favorite cameras to make photos of your family? Now, this is a very good question. I love this question because this actually ties in with my Polaroid. Now, I've actually got some example photos to show you. Where are they gone? Here they are. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite photos. I love taking Polaroids of my family. I took some Polaroids yesterday of my son. I'll show you them. Here we go. This is my son yesterday in the in Brisbane City in Starbucks. My daughter wanted to go to Starbucks. I hate Starbucks. In fact, in fact, I'll tell you this. The coffee, I was reluctant to get a coffee at Starbucks yesterday in Brisbane. There's not many Starbucks in Australia because Australians don't really like Starbucks. But the kids wanted milky, you know, creamy, sugary drinks. So we went there. And I, against my better judgment, I ordered a flat white, which is an Australian coffee, two shots of espresso with, you know, milk. And I said, Phil, can you just fill it like three quarters of the way up? And I got the coffee. It was filled to the top, which was against my instructions. They even wrote on the cup, fill to line. And the person, the barista ignored it. The coffee was like, I couldn't touch it. It was so hot. And in Australia for a flat white, that is a no, no. It's got to be like warm, like warm enough for you to drink straight away. 
and it tasted burnt. It was horrible. I actually went back. I was a bit of a, a bit of a Karen, as they say. Um, and I, I actually asked for a refund very politely and they gave me my money back. That's how bad the coffee was. But we took some nice photos. So here is my son in Starbucks yesterday. A nice smile. Here is uh, my son in a little alleyway in Brisbane. There was a really weird uh, person running up the mall um, shouting obscenities. I'm not sure. I think they perhaps had some challenges in their life because they looked very scary. Actually, I, we, we steered away from them. Here is my wife in the back garden with on the eye type. This is the eye type film with the black frame. That is beautiful. I love that black frame. That is lovely. And the wife's not looking too bad either. Here is Marshall Dalmatian, the, the pooch of the house. You might be able to hear him bark if he, if he gets a bit wound up. That's on blue duochrome. I quite like the blue duochrome. I've got a stack of it in the fridge, so I better shoot the rest of it. Oh, that's not my family. It's a leaf. Uh, so there you go. That is my favorite film. I mean, I, I take literally take pictures of my family on every single camera. I've got digital iPhone, uh, medium format, uh, 35 mil, APS, Mike Gutterman's APS. Uh, but my favorite is the Polaroid. You know, you take a beautiful image when you're out and about and you can, you know, 10 minutes later, hide in your bag, 10 minutes later, it comes out beautifully. So that is my favorite uh, camera to take of my family. Now, just looking at the, the comments here. Uh, MD3631. Hello, fairly new subscriber here. Thank you so much for subscribing. I hope you're enjoying the film photography related content on this channel. I hope you and the family are doing well. We are doing very well. Thank you. We've had a big weekend. Uh, we went out to the uh, like a big state fair, county fair kind of thing. It's called the ECA. It's an agricultural fair. People in Australia will know where it is. Lots of rides, lots of really unhealthy food, lots of walking around. There's cows, there's sheep, there's monster trucks, all that kind of stuff. So we did that one night. Then the next day was my birthday. We went to a theme park movie world and that was packed. It was really, really packed. So it was a bit stressful trying to get in ride queues. And then we, we went out yesterday to the city. So we've had three days where we've been out because it was my birthday on Friday, which is why I bought all the Polaroid stuff. And uh, we had three days out and um, yeah, we're just knackered today. It's Sunday. It's, beautiful. it's actually the most beautiful weather today, but we're we're staying in the house because we're, we're all tired. Um, so yeah, thank you for subscribing. Thank you to everyone for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Um, just picked up my third Olympus, third, third Olympus pen FT. Did you get your back, yours back from Lucy yet? Gosh, Clayton, have you got three Olympus pen FTs? Oh, actually, I remember now, Clayton. I remember, I think you bought one, but there was an issue and then you bought another one, then you bought another one. Um, I think that's what, I don't think you're, you're hoarding them, are you? Uh, and did I get it back from Lucy? Yes, I got it back on my birthday. We are actually, because we went down to a theme park, which is near Lucy. Uh, me and my son, we drove down to Lucy's compound. She's got like this big mansion compound with big steel gates at the front. And she didn't want us coming in the compound because, you know, we'd lower the tone of the exclusive estate. <laughs> so we, we, we waited outside the big, big iron gates and uh, she come out in her, one of her colorful, um, you know, uh, knitted sweaters that uh, hip people wear where all us uh, boring old people just wear, you know, branded shirts. Actually, I, th I was wearing a Kodak shirt this, that day and I'm wearing a Polaroid one today. So yes, I've got it back with the pen FT. I've, it's actually my second pen FT. The first one, the meter broke. The second one, it's been working perfectly. And then I took it down to Lucy about two months ago and I, sh I was showing her how to work it. Like, you know, you'll see it, it says like, there's a number in the viewfinder. Like if it says four, then you just look at the lens and put the lens to four. If it says six, you put it to six. So it's pretty easy to use and is what I love about it. And the funny thing was when I was showing Lucy, she hadn't actually even touched it and the meter stopped working. And I was like, oh my gosh, the meter has stopped working. I'm, I'm devastated. But I gave it to Lucy. I said, oh, you'll have to use a meter app or something, you know, to, to work it out. But then when she started using it about a week ago, the meter came back to life. So uh, it, yeah, the PenFT is over there. The meter is working. And I'm actually thinking about shooting some infrared film with it very soon. Um, so yeah, cause that way, you know, I'll get 72 shots so I can actually bracket my shots a little bit. You know, I can do one over one under and see which one was better. Um, uh, of course they're only, you know, they are physically a smaller size, but they're only going to go on, you know, Instagram or on a YouTube video. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to be selling, you know, them to the Smithsonian Institute or anything. Um, back to the comments. Um, do they make it as strong a coffee as you made for Lucy and Lux? No, I, the, the coffee I made for Lucy and Lux, apparently, uh, gosh, this is coming back to haunt me now. Lucy and Lux came to my house one day when we were shooting a video and they, I think I made them, I think they made their coffee way too milky. Um, yeah, I failed. I, I, I felt like a failure, to be honest, when I made the coffee, because I, I kind of did the, the polite thing where they sip in the coffee and then they kind of put it on the table and then they're like, oh, I haven't finished my coffee. It went a bit cold. And then I offered to microwave it. They went, no, 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 it's okay. Oh, we go, we got to go. So, um, yeah, I kind of failed on that front. But uh, I've got a little espresso machine and I usually make it quite strong. Uh, uh, hello to the old camera guy, Dave Mahali. How are you? Yes, Blue Duo Chrome is good. However... I'm going to show you something. Something else I bought from the Polaroid uh, store in the Netherlands. Not this order. 
last year's order. I only order once a year. Like I, I ordered, I order about five hundred US dollars a year from the Polaroid store. And the reason I order do such a big order is not because I've got lots of money, but if you order direct from the Netherlands, of course you're getting it straight from the factory. But also in Australia, here in Australia, you actually save money. Like a pack of film here is about. Um, it's about 18 US dollars if you get it straight from the factory, if you order in bulk. Whereas if you go to a shop here in Australia, it's going to be like 27, 28 US dollars for a pack. So you're saving some serious money if you buy in bulk, if you're a big Polaroid shooter. Now, last year, I don't order once a year, uh, unfortunately, because I can't afford to order more than once a year. But I ordered these albums. These are fantastic. I love these albums. Got some beautiful pink flowers there from Matthew Joseph. I know he loves pink flowers. But um, yeah, I, these are beautiful, beautiful albums. I love these albums. And now back to what Dave said about blue duochrome. I thought blue would be my favorite. Check out the yellow one there. There's my daughter at the top there in yellow duochrome. Sorry about the bloody reflection. There we go. I love the yellow duochrome. I'm actually quite surprised at how much I love that one. So yeah, yellow duochrome is the bomb. The blue is okay, but the yellow for me is uh, the bomb. Here's some more family pictures of the kids. I love these pictures. A lot of these, this is like my family album kind of thing. And then there's some boats there. Oh, here we go. Here's a whole, these are all I type ones. Uh, so I just love taking uh, pictures of the family on, uh, what do you call it? Polaroid. Um, Eka, agree. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Well, happy birthday to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like an awesome time. It was an awesome time. A very, very knackering time. We're all knackered today. Glad to see the meter is working. Yes, in the Pen FT. I've been thinking about the same thing with IR film. Yeah, I've got a couple of boxes uh, of my IR film. I've got... It's, it's, you know, it's like 10, 15, 20 years out of date. I've got black and white and I've got uh, color. And I'm thinking, look, you know, I'm just going to bracket the first roll. Like, who cares? Like, because I didn't, I don't want to shoot it all exactly metered perfectly because what if it's aged or I, I don't know. So I'm thinking I'll just have a muck around, put it in the pen FT, 72 images of IR film and, and see what settings work. Um, Matthew Joseph vomited at my pink flowers. I think I sent Matthew Joseph a postcard of the pink flowers recently. The old camera guy, I've got one pack of yellow duochrome I haven't shot. It's on my to-do list. Yeah, I really like the yellow duochrome, Dave. I think, it, to me, so far, it's my favorite. The green, I only ordered three packs of the green. Um, it, I think it's a bit, you know, it's a bit more special to shoot with. People are saying it's, uh, this. you have to follow, well, you don't have to follow instructions, but it's a little less forgiving, perhaps, than some of the other duochromes. The one I'm really looking forward to coming back is pink or red. I'd love to see a pink or red duochrome. And now that I've just ordered 500 US bucks worth of stuff, they're probably going to bring it out in like a month, and I'll be, I'll be, you know, I'll be pressured into doing another one. Um, uh, you hear any more info about Lomo? No. So I was actually thinking about that today. Uh, so Clayton's asked, do I know any more info about my my Lomography turquoise order? Um, so I actually looked it up this morning. Now, I've got the email saying that I've ordered it. They sent me an update saying it would be, I think they're shipping at the end of August. So it could, in theory, be shipping in two weeks' time. I tried to log into my Lomography account, but I wonder, I couldn't do it. And I wonder if I checked out as a guest <laughs> when I bought all that turquoise. Um, I, I, I couldn't seem to to, um, to log into my account. I did forget password and all that, and it didn't work. So I, I must have checked out my turquoise order as a guest, which is a bit silly. But I do have the email saying that they should send it by the end of August. So I'm hoping it'll arrive here in Australia in September. I think the Australian orders come out of Hong Kong. I don't know where they, they finish off the film, um, but if, you know, if they're fishing off the film in China or Hong Kong or somewhere, you know, hopefully it'll, it might get to Australia first before other countries, probably not. Um, the other film that I'm really looking forward to is, of course, Orwo's uh, NC500 uh, color negative cinema film. And uh, that was supposed to go out in July, but it, they've actually said now uh, it's being, I think they made the film in Germany, but then they sent it to China, to Shanghai, to be put into DX coded canisters. And so Orwo on Twitter recently said, you know, there's a delay because of rolling COVID shutdowns in China. They're now expecting it to go out in four to six weeks which was, that was about 10 days ago. So hopefully sometime in September, the Orwo color cinema film will ship and hopefully I'll get it in October, maybe, who knows, but fingers crossed, Turquoise and uh, NC500 arrive soon. Um, the yellow one is sick, the yellow one is sick. Uh, so there you go. I think I better, I better finish this off because I've been going 20, 24 minutes, 25 minutes. Any last questions from the crowd, let me know. Uh, I'll just show you one more thing before I go. This is my little, I've almost finished the test roll in this. This is the, one of the cameras I picked up at the Brisbane Camera Fair, the Yashka T3D with a nice little scope there on top. I'm up to frame number 31. I've got a roll. I don't even know what I've got in here. Is it Portra 160? Gosh, my eyes are bad. 
I think it's Portra 160. I can't quite read it, <laughs> but I've had, I've had a bit of fun um, shooting with that. I've got about, oh, here we go. I've got, these are my rolls of film. I've got ready to send the lab. So I've got 400D shot at ISO 1600. I've got a roll of C200. Oh, I shot that in my R1, my um, Rico R1 that I got at the camera fair. As I took this out of the camera though, there's all this black stuff all over it. I'm like, what's this black powder? And then I realized the light seals have disintegrated in the Rico R1. So this could be really Lomography style, massive light leaks. Um, I've got my first roll of Cosmo Mono. Cosmo, what, no, I don't know what it's called. That it's Cosmo Photo Agent Shadow. Agent Shadow, not Mono. Cosmo Photo Agent Shadow. And so I shot that at sixteen hundred. I know that Dave Mahali's recently shot his. Uh, I enjoyed that video. And um, yeah, I've got mine here. I've, I've got to get the lab to push it two stops. And I got a roll of Portrait One Sixty. I can't even remember what I shot that in. Uh, so there you go. That's all my lab. That's all my film. Get some glasses, yeah. Get some. I need. I need better. Gla I'm so blind. I don't know why photography is my my passion because I'm so blind without these. And um, there you go. I think I'm going to finish off. I hope you guys are having a lovely, uh, you know, Sunday here in Australia or Saturday evening in the states, or um, very early Sunday morning in, in anyone's watching in Europe. And um, yeah, take care. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.